So I'll probably catch a fair amount of slack for this one, but it's okay, it's the truth, honestly. Manual mode is not the best shooting mode for photographers, and here's why. Now, I could be partly to blame for this, as over the years I've always recommended other photographers become comfortable using manual mode sooner rather than later. And looking back, I, I probably should have done a better job at clarifying that recommendation. So before I jump into why I think shooting manual isn't the best, let me clarify one point real quick. I think the reason why every photographer should become comfortable using manual mode isn't solely to achieve total control over their camera, rather is for the teaching ability that manual mode provides. In my opinion, there is still no better way to fully understand the exposure triangle and the intricacies behind it than becoming comfortable using manual mode. Now with that said, it doesn't mean manual is the best shooting mode for photographers and here's why. So manual mode no doubt offers the most control over your camera. You as a photographer control aperture, you as a photographer control shutter speed and ISO. In photography, it all comes down to capturing moments. It's what we're all trying to do. We're trying to capture specific moments in time. These moments in time happen at different rates of speed. They're all completely different. There are no same moments from time to time. They're all different, they're all unique. With that being said, there is no one size fits all solution when it comes to a shooting mode. So when people ask, you know, what's the best shooting mode for photography? There isn't one. The, 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 the answer really should be, well, what are you photographing? It depends. Every shooting mode is better for a certain scenario. So there is no one size fits all solution. It's why cameras today have multiple shooting modes. And the three most common shooting modes cameras have today are of course manual mode, you have aperture priority, and then you have shutter priority. Those are the three most commonly used uh, photographing modes. So for instance, if you're using shutter priority, that's basically you telling the camera, camera, shutter speed is the most important aspect of this scene that I'm about to capture. And me as a photographer, I want to control the shutter speed. That's my priority. And you camera, you control the aperture and ISO. On the opposite side of that, aperture priority is basically you telling the camera, camera, aperture is the most number, is the, the most important aspect of the, of the scene that I'm about to photograph. And me as a photographer, I want to control the aperture because that is my priority. And you as the camera, you control the ISO and the shutter speed. And of course, manual mode is you controlling everything. You controlling the ISO, the aperture, and the shutter speed, and the camera makes no decisions on its own. Now, if, for example, wildlife photographers or sports photographers, genres of photography where things happen extremely fast, shutter speed is usually the most important aspect of the exposure triangle. Because if you're capturing you know, birds in flight, if you're doing a one second exposure, that bird is gonna be a streak across the sky. So shutter speed is very, very important. So things that are happening at different rates of speed and that rates, those rates of speed are constantly changing. Sports is a great example of that. So shutter speed is probably the most important aspect for those types of photographers. So maybe shutter priority is the best mode for them. Uh, portraiture, so portrait photographers, if you're taking a portrait of someone outside and the light is changing somewhat fast or the person is moving quickly, but shutter speed isn't critical, but the aperture is absolutely the most imperative aspect of your photograph to get that nice kind of soft and out of focus background, maybe aperture priority is best for you. Or maybe you're a landscape photographer where things are unfolding very slowly. You know, mountains aren't moving quickly, trees aren't shifting from the left side of your frame to the right side of your frame. Things are happening slower. Maybe in that type of a scenario, you have the time to use manual mode so you can have total control over your camera and you have the time to pick the aperture, to pick the shutter speed and to pick the ISO. Maybe manual mode is best for that genre of photography. So it just depends on what you're photographing. There is no one size fits all solution when it comes to the best or the perfect shooting mode. They are all completely different. So I would recommend anyone who is getting started with photography, definitely get comfortable with all three of the main shooting modes. Definitely getting comfortable with manual mode, having control of your entire camera is very important, but most importantly, it's going to teach you the exposure triangle. It's gonna help you to become more, uh, more comfortable with the details surrounding that. And then being comfortable with aperture priority, being comfortable with shutter priority. So the next time you encounter a scene, whatever that scene may be, whether it's landscapes or maybe you're photographing your kids' soccer games or volleyball games, or maybe you're, you're photographing birds in flight, or maybe you're taking a family portrait. Every moment that we're trying to capture is completely different. So being as comfortable with all three of the, all three of the same, of, 
<laughs> All three of the main shooting modes in a camera is absolutely imperative. And I think that that is the best shooting mode is by being comfortable with all three. So I do hope that this real quick video maybe kind of helps other people out who might be thinking about, you know, what is the best shooting mode? There is no best shooting mode, but it is definitely one of the most common questions that I receive is what's the best shooting mode that uh, a, a beginner photographer or this type of photographer or that type of photographer should use. And there is no answer. It just depends on what you're photographing. So survey the scene, see what's moving in your scene, see how quickly things are unfolding, and then determine what shooting mode is best to capture that specific moment. So I ho do hope you enjoyed this week's video. It's a very quick video this week. If you did enjoy it though, if you could, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me here today. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.